When I was going through my breakup with my first boyfriend, and I was really sad about it. Felt like he didn't care that we were breaking up, and I, I felt so devastated. My mother said, V, be so thankful that this man is not caring. This man is not chasing you because you know deep down that that's not the right person for you. So imagine how much harder it would be for you to move on if there was some idiot chasing after you, trying to sell you all of the dreams that you deep down know he can't actually afford. How much harder that would be on you to actually walk away. It's so much easier when someone gives you all of the reasons why you shouldn't stay by their lack of effort, by lack of actions. When they don't care, be so thankful because they're making it so much easier to move on. And one thing that I've always believed in is that no man that's actually meant for you, A, will get away from you. And then B, no man that's actually meant for you would give you that much space to put another man in front of you. And lastly, when a man steps away from you or every time you part ways with someone that you think you love, not only does it make you like them a little bit less, but when that happens to you, just think about the fact that this man is giving you the chance to learn what it's like to live without them. Every time they're ghosting you, every time they go silent, every time they show how much they don't care about your feelings, they are just giving you the opportunity to learn what it's like to live without them. And they're also giving you the opportunity to meet someone else while they're not around. So be so thankful. Be like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. That you care so much about me, my future, being my soft girl era and so on. That you are giving me the space right now in order to put another man in front of me, in order to find someone else who will treat me better. It's Violet Benson, your favorite meme queen and the big sis you didn't ask for, but need. Welcome to Almost Adulting. Almost Adulting. Are you ready? Hello, besties. And welcome to a brand new Almost Adulting, the largest self-help podcast and movement. You know, mom destination for personal growth, mental health, dating, everything in between. I'm your Russian sister giving you that tough love you may not want to hear, but best believe you're gonna need. Today's episode is super fun. Not only is today's episode super fun, but you're also getting a bonus episode on Saturday that's going to be all about how to convince him that he's in control, even though he's not. It's going to be step-by-step, psychology, everything. But today's episode is all about dating, whether it's beginning stages, middle stages, or you're going through a heartbreak. I'm going to open up your eyes on why it didn't work out, the truth about your person, how to know if you're in love, the truth about love and relationships, and the key to a successful relationship. How you need more than love just to sustain a relationship. Three things that you should always ask yourself when you first start dating someone. You should not move forward without first asking yourself these three questions. Advice for people in the beginning stages of dating. Um, advice for couples. How to stop wasting your time with people who don't show up for you. And so much more. This episode will help you figure out whether the person you're currently dating is the one, is right for you. I'm also going to tell you the type of energy that you present in a relationship that will also tell you whether or not it's the right relationship for you. So keep listening. So if you're looking to finally break that cycle of toxic relationships or the confusion, the fog that you have in your brain, whether or not someone's right for you, or you're looking to demand the love that you know you deserve, then I'm telling you this episode is for you. So make sure to share with all of your friends, save it, download it right now, subscribe to my podcast. So you can always go back to this episode whenever you need a little advice in your ear and just listening to my voice. So yeah, I'm excited. Let's get started. But before we dive into that, First things first, can I be honest? If you ever catch me on my Instagram, in my stories, my personal Instagram, saying things like, in my soft girly era, in my lover's era, no, the fuck I'm not. I'm in my angry girl era. I'm in my petty (laughs) girl era. I'm in my faking it till I make it era, okay? If you ever catch me doing that, it's because somebody's dusty ass son piss me the frick off and now I'm here to make a point of like who the f are you to piss me off and since I'm not one to post out songs I'm not one to post out quotes I'm not one to even talk poorly about someone who irritated me because I just genuinely believe that they don't even deserve that much energy for me <laughs> even though I obviously give energy in a completely different way but somehow I pretended like that type of energy is fine but 
I'm just one of those people where I believe that a I never want to somebody that pissed me off to think that I'm sad over them. I will cry behind closed doors, but ask any of my exes. They've always said, I felt like you didn't even give a shit about me towards then. I felt like you didn't even care when we broke up. I, I was confused about the whole thing. Yeah, that's because you didn't deserve to know, but I'm a Scorpio. We break down, we reinvent ourselves we go through hell and back and then we come back from the ashes that's what i've gone through every time with the next but yeah if you see me suddenly say things like if one person won't then someone else will or is there anything better than an everything shower in a cute outfit i think not just know that when i posted a picture of me without a caption i'm actually in sweats and i probably haven't showered in two to three days so my hair is greasy and oily and the picture that i posted is a picture that i took three days ago when i showered and i'm just posting it today because why because again somebody's dusty ass son pissed me the f off and i have to make a point because that's just who i am and that's what helps me heal like we all have our own process thankfully i'm not going around keying anyone's car i'm just posting a freaking story that says i'm just a girl so i think in a sense that's a little healthier for me at least. But yeah, I just had to say that because I feel like with my close friends, I can always tell when a guy pissed them off based on what they post, like immediately. Every girl has a different type of personality, especially my my fire sign girlfriends. Oh, I know when they're going through a breakup because they post the craziest shit and they're always like extra sexy. Then I also know when my water sign friends are going through a breakup because they post the saddest songs I've ever seen in my life and the saddest quotes. Of my Libra friends, they post the most annoying quotes, like a million thousand quotes. And then there's a new guy like the next day and now he's the love of their life. <laughs> so I always know. So yeah, if you ever see me post things like that, then you know. Because when someone's over something, when someone's actually unbothered, they don't go on the internet to let everyone know how unbothered they are. <laughs> so when someone posts, I cannot care any less. I couldn't be any more unbothered. They're bothered, okay? <laughs> I'll be the first to admit it. Luckily, most men are not the smartest emotionally. So luckily, I think to us women, we know the truth. We can catch it right away. We can tell. But I would say most men cannot. They're like, oh my God, she doesn't care. Oh my God, she's moved on. Oh my God, why is she not crying over me? Well, because you fucking suck. That's why. Period. Next. But I will say showering, doing an everything shower, going for a run, taking a sleep, taking a sleep, going to sleeping through your sadness or frustration, putting on cute underwear or cute outfit really does make the biggest difference because nothing makes you feel uglier than being loved by the wrong man. So after that, I think all you can do is when you take that everything shower, the self-care and it feels nice and you put on this beautiful outfit that makes you feel beautiful, you really do just finally re-remember who you are, at least for those moments and you feel beautiful. And then you go out with your girlfriends, you get attention or just people looking at you or people smiling at you. You smile at the world, the world smiles back at you. And there really is nothing better than that. And then you just, you know, move on. Whether it was somebody that you were talking to for a day, 20 days, Days, 100 days, 700 years, it doesn't matter. All of that, you will always move on because it really is true. If one person won't, someone else will. One person no is another person's yes. And you just always have to remember that when someone makes you feel like shit or like you're not enough or they're not fighting for you, it's easy to immediately go to, why am I not good enough for them? Why won't they put in more effort? Why won't they try harder? Why don't they want me? Or you go into the route of, you made me feel like I'm not enough. You made me feel like shit. You made me feel so bad about myself. They should know that, they should feel that. You make me feel so shitty. And then I realized, I don't actually have to continue. Like I actually do have a choice. I'm not stuck having to talk to this person. I'm not stuck having to communicate with this person. I'm just choosing to continue because I subconsciously hope that their actions will change. I subconsciously hope that they'll treat me better, but that's my issue. 
they're just continuing to be the same person they were from day one. Or yeah, maybe if they changed in front of you, then they're showing you who they truly are and they're just continuing to be who they actually are. You're just the one out here that's hoping for them to be a little bit different. So that's the kind of realization that I sometimes always end up having towards the end when I'm willing to kind of remove myself from someone's life where I just go, oh, I'm choosing to stick around. They've been showing me who they are this whole time. I've just been choosing not to acknowledge it. I've just been choosing to see the best in them. And of course, you can't help but then feel like shit as well about the fact that, well, I feel like such a fool for sticking around even a day too long. I feel like such a fool for, for allowing them to treat me this way. They must think I'm such a loser. They, mu they must feel so good about themselves that I'm giving them all this attention. Well, guess what? Tomorrow, you don't have to do that anymore. And then if you think, well, they don't even care because they just assume I'm going to come back. Well, let them assume that and then have them see you not come back. Things always seem like the biggest deal when it first happens and disappointments are never fun, especially for people who like to fix things. But I think time is always makes the biggest difference. Like you don't have to know all the answers tomorrow. Just know that with time, you'll learn why it didn't work out. The truth is, the person that's meant to be with you will probably want to be there as well. Like the person that's meant to be with you will probably like you as much as you like them. The person that wants to be with you will probably put in the same effort that you're putting in. Like there's no such thing as a one-sided soulmate. <laughs> that's just one-sided love. The person that's meant to be with you is going to want to be there. It's going to want to put in the effort. It's going to want, it's going to know what they want from the day that they meet you the same way you kind of had an idea. That's what you have to remind yourself. So just because you think some person may have been your person. I just, I don't think they are if they're not showing up the way you're showing up. They're not your person. Then. There's no way that would be your person. So that's one thing that you need to remember. That's what always allows me to release and let go. Today's episode is sponsored by Acorns. One thing that's super difficult to talk about is dating. But the second most difficult thing to talk about is usually money. But Acorns makes it easy for you to start automatically saving and investing for your future. You don't need a lot of money or expertise to invest with Acorns. In fact, you can get started with just your spare change. That's what I did. And you also don't need to have all the knowledge in the world in these things. I always feel so complicated or you don't need to be an accountant to know how to do this. Even though I'm an accountant, I'm telling you, you don't need to be one. Instead of wasting your time investing yourself into the wrong person, why not invest your time and your money into yourself and your future starting with acorns? Basically, Acorns recommends an expert-built portfolio that fits you and your money goals. Then it automatically invests your money for you. You can invest your spare change. You can invest while you bank. You can earn bonus investments and so much more. You can even get Acorns Gold and they'll boost your retirement with a 3% IRA to match on any new contributions to your Acorns Later Retirement Account. I mean, you guys need to check it out to finally invest in something that wants to invest back in you. Instead of a man, how about Acorns? So head to acorns.com slash almost adulting or download the Acorns app to start saving and investing for your future today. Paid non-client endorsement. Compensation provides incentive to positively promote Acorns. Investing involves risk. Acorns Advisors, LLC, an SCC registered investment advisor. View important disclosures at acorns.com slash almost adulting. So here's a few words of advice that I can give you when you're dating someone. The beginning stages of dating, and this is more for women, to figure out whether or not it's the right person for you, whether it's the beginning of dating or you've been together now for a couple of months. Number one, when they do something that irritates you, throws you off, puts you in a bad mood, confuses you, whatever it is, always ask yourself, would my future husband do this? Would the future father of my kids pull shit like this? Would I be okay? with my future baby daddy acting this way? And if your answer is ever no, then it's time for you to reevaluate if this relationship is working for you or not. The second thing that you should pay attention to is the energy that you are sitting in when you're with this man. A lot of times we date guys and we don't realize, but suddenly we're becoming more bossy, more anxious. We are moving towards masculine energy. Obviously, everyone should be in both of their feminine and masculine energy, but the right relationship for you as a woman is a man that puts you in your feminine energy. You suddenly take a step back. You're relaxed. You feel in your soft era. So obviously, all these jokes of being my soft girl era and all that, yeah, I was making jokes, but the right man will put you 
in your soft era. With the right man, you will feel so relaxed. There's even some research that literally says that with the right partner, you get more sleepy around them because that's how relaxed your nervous system is. Beautiful, right? So with the right partner, he will be, and you being the right partner for them, they would move more towards their masculine energy and you would move towards your feminine energy. So you will be more relaxed while he plans the dates. He makes you feel less anxious. You guys communicate well. You feel safe in your partnership with him. You guys are a team. So when you start to notice yourself more anxious around someone, more aggressive, more in arguments, wanting to argue, having disagreements, wanting to tell this guy off or other people, feeling the need to chase this guy, feeling the need to stalk him, getting insecure about what he's up to. That is all things that are putting you in your masculine energy, which means this is not the right relationship for you. With the right person, you would be in your soft girl era. You would be in your feminine energy era. And feminine energy also means that it would put you in your feminine caregiver, softness, good listener. It puts you in your softness, in your intuition, in your vulnerability, in your creativity. It allows you to reclaim your power. You feel beautiful. You feel powerful. You feel in your self-awareness. You focus on nurturing yourself, your partnership, your partner. It really cultivates the beauty in you and everything around you. Because when you are loved by the right person the right way, you are your most beautiful, right? So it allows you to then nurture the relationship and put in that energy that only a feminine energy can do. Well, your partner can be in their masculine energy where they feel respected. They feel valued. They can feel like you care what they have to say. They can feel like you are nurturing them. They feel loved. So they're able to then plan the dates. They're able to fix things if that's their love language, whatever it is. But they're in their masculine energy and you get to be relaxed not anxious in your feminine energy. That's how you know you were the right partner. There's nothing more beautiful than a woman being loved right and a man being loved right because they both get to play their roles properly and you can tell when you see real love. And you can also tell when a relationship is not right, whether it's for you or for your friends, you know. So whenever I move to the wrong energy, that's when I usually know this is not right for me. Being anxious over somebody, feeling confused, moving towards them with like this aggressive energy, all of that is not for me. That's how I know I'm not with the right person and it's not gonna work out. I'm not trying to be in my masculine energy and put some man in his feminine energy. It's just, that's not what I'm interested in. I already do that at work. In my relationships, I'm trying, I'm looking to take the back seat. And as, as much as we have all these talks about find a man that's a provider that supports you and all that, I think a lot of times get, people get mixed up what a provider is. A provider can also be someone that provides you with comfort, with trust, with somebody you, you can depend on, with someone that makes you feel safe, with someone who's supportive. Like that's a provider, like that's a real man. And that's what you should be looking for. The third thing you should look for is their actions versus their words. In the beginning of dating, men will tell you, they will sell you a dream. And most of the time they're in debt and they can't afford it, okay? So really pay attention to their actions. Are their words and actions aligning? Are they putting in effort to show you they care about you? Not even just by showing up and being present, but are they even asking you questions or getting to know you? Because let's say they say, I, would, I, I want, just want to get to know you more, but then do they mean your vagina or do they mean how many siblings do you have? Tell me more about yourself. What's your favorite hobby? What's your favorite movie? Where do you love to eat? And then I'm going to take you there. Like, do they remember small details about things that you say and bring it up again? Like, that's what you need to pay attention to. A lot of times a guy will tell a girl, I like you, especially my listeners in their 20s where when they write me emails or DMs about the relationship. A lot of times they'll say, this guy said he's obsessed with me. This guy told me he likes me a lot. But then I go, well, what do you guys talk about? Well, we don't really talk. Or what does he ask? Does he ask you questions? Does he want to get to know you? Well, I always ask him questions and he never asks me anything back. Right. Then this guy is not actually trying to get to know you. He's trying to get to know inside of your butthole and inside of your vagina and spend some time there. 
He's trying to take a vacation in your holes. That's really what he's looking for. Even if a guy tells you I'm looking for something serious or I'm not sure what I'm looking for, but it feels like you could be it for me or I'll just start slow and see where it goes. Especially if you're looking for something more than that, they're not the right guys for you. Like that should be ding, 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 red flag. And a lot of times you, you may not catch it immediately because you are more just only hearing the other things that you wanted to hear, like how pretty you are and how much they like you. But then afterwards, sit down and really assess what you guys actually spoke about. Did he actually ask you questions or was it only you asking him? What did you learn about him from this? Are his actions and words aligning? When he tells you, I'm going to call you a certain time, does he actually call you? Does he remember to follow up with whatever he said he was going to do? Don't just only listen to, yeah, I like you. How they treat you is how they feel about you. That's number three. And you have to remember and you have to say this to yourself. Do not be delusional about anything else. How they treat you is how they feel about you because behavior is the most real form of communication. If you're getting mixed signals, don't try to decipher them or try to decide what they actually mean. Take it as what it is. The mixed signals is that they're not into you. The mixed signals is they're not right for you. The mixed signals is about you walking away because they are clearly unsure of you. Pay attention to their actions. The right person for you is the person who's going to be sure about you. They're gonna give you the same energy that you're giving them. So until then, call back your energy and put that energy, pour it back into yourself. Have you been feeling like picking up a hobby lately or maybe you've run out of men to reject and you're just like, what else can I do with my life? How about reading a book? But a book that teaches you a lot about yourself, okay? There is this book that I recently started reading, you guys, and it's revolutionary. It's sensational. It's a game-changing exploration of women's sexuality, asks and answers. How do women feel about sex when they have the freedom to be totally anonymous. Delicious, right? Well, it's basically this book called Want by Jillian Anderson. It's an instant New York Times bestseller. You know Jillian Anderson. She's an award-winning actor. It's basically anonymous sex stories from women all over the world. If your sex life is as dry as mine, you might as well just enjoy what these women get to write, their fantasies, what's happening in their life, and they get to share and be as open as possible because, you know, it's anonymous. From a Sikh woman who writes about her secret lust for her brother-in-law to a white British woman who just wants to properly be kissed one last time, Want is this provocative and page-turning collection of sexual fantasies from women around the world. So I don't know about you, but I'd rather be reading this book about all these fantasies than wasting my time on some dude who's going to jackhammer you for three seconds and then forget to ever call you again. This sounds way more promising, way more exciting. So definitely check out this book want buy your copy off of this year's hottest book the instant new york times bestseller want that's now available wherever books are sold and i will also include the link in my bio and you can also use the code podcast for 20 percent off of your first order now before we continue today's episode i just wanted to urge my american listeners to go out there and vote in this election that's coming up it's just it's not something to look away you really shouldn't so i just wanted to give a few little talking points my first thought would be that let's be honest donald trump does not fight for the middle class he is only looking out for himself and Kamala Harris has spent her life fighting for the people. That is a fact. How do I know? Um, I literally worked with her at the district attorney's office. I know that woman. My second thought is that Donald Trump's Extreme Project 2025 agenda gives him an unprecedented, unchecked power to do whatever he wants. And that's uh, scary. A second Trump term would be even more dangerous because there would be no guardrails. Kamala Harris is offering a new way forward for the American people. She believes that it's time to finally turn the page on Trump and build a future where our freedoms are protected, our freedoms matter, and that anything is possible if we create the right foundation for that. Kamala Harris will create an opportunity economy. She's going to bring down costs from groceries to housing, prescription drugs, and so that every American with hard work and ambition has now a chance to compete and a chance to succeed. I mean, that's literally the American dream. So choose a new way forward and visit kamalaharris.com slash issues to learn more. This is paid for by Harris for President. A lot of times attention is not actually love or liking someone and lusting for someone is not attachment. 
So take back your energy from the people you're attached to and call that energy back to yourself. It's going to be lonely, yes, but it's going to be okay because it's much better to be lonely for a little bit until you meet your person than it is to be with the wrong person because nothing feels lonelier than being with the wrong person. Trust me. I think men can be interested in a woman, but not enough to want to invest time in her. So a man can like you, a man can be interested in you, but not invested in you. And those are two separate things. I would say that's the fourth thing you need to learn. A man could be into you, but not invested in you. And those two things are a big difference. Someone who's into you will like your attention. Someone who's invested in you will invest their time, their money, their care, their attention, their everything in you. Figure out how to make you a part of their schedule and their life. That's the biggest difference. So sometimes people can like you, but not enough to invest time in you. It's not personal. It's not your fault. It's just not your person. And that's okay. You move along. I mean, I've seen relationships, full on relationships where you can tell that man does not like his girl. A man can love a woman and still hate her. And it's much better to leave in the beginning than it is to stay with someone. And then three years later, five years later, 15 years later, you realize that you were in a relationship with your number one hater. So I definitely don't want that for me. And I definitely don't want that for you either. And to cheer you guys up, all these guys or girls that you let go and you always wondered, why didn't they fight for me harder? Or did they put more effort into this other person? A lot of these people, they don't really change. They continue being exactly who they are, which should confirm and validate the decision that you made to walk away for a reason. Like for example, the other day I talked to this person, we were catching up and I was trying to talk to him about the guy that I was kind of interested in and that moment and he was talking poorly about him obviously because then he started to reminisce about him and I this guy and I went out for like I don't know like once maybe twice to be fair I genuinely don't really remember how many dates we went on all we've ever done was kiss and I have very bad memory once it doesn't work out between me and someone I kind of just forget about them I'll never see them in a romantic light so anything romantic between us kind of fades away from me but anyway he kept reminiscing about our past and he would be like when I went out with you and I told this person, this person, they were just so excited to hear about us. And they were so happy for us because they know what a great girl you are. And yeah, I still regret letting you go. This man is engaged. <laughs> this man is engaged. So before you go, oh, wow, he regrets letting you. This man is engaged. <laughs> so when I tell you there's nothing more validating about your decisions in moments like this then trust me when I tell you, when you walk away from certain people, you walked away from them for a reason. Because I was already in a relationship eight years in my 20s. He used to cheat on me. That was enough for me. And I'm happy I walked away from that. And that same guy, what did he do? He reached out to me a month before he proposed trying to have sex with me. So when I tell you these men don't change, you know from the beginning when someone's not right for you. You just keep second guessing yourself because you're hoping for something else. You shouldn't hold a grudge against people, though I can't tell you what to do. That's one thing that I just can't do. I'll be mad for a day and I'll post that, a story like that. I allow myself to feel and I just get over it. Like, I don't want to hold any energy towards a person that treated me wrong. I don't want to keep dwelling on why they treated me wrong. Like, that's for them to know. That's not for me to try to figure out because I'll never know. And who the F cares? I rather just forget about it and move on. And even if they did get an ounce of my attention and that made them feel good, good for them. How lucky are they that they got even the smallest ounce of attention for me? Great. Congratulations. That's the best thing for you this year. And that'll never happen again. And you should always tell yourself that the only way you would ever even look that person's way again, if they come back as a different person, different energy, offering you something they couldn't before. So whenever I try to manifest or anything like that, I never manifest for a specific person ever. I would never do that. I always, even if I have this specific person in the back of my head, I will always say, if it's meant to be, please put this person in front of me or someone better. I always say, or someone better, because there is a potential that there's a better match out there for you especially if the current match that you have is clearly not working out, it's for a reason. Like, yes, relationships, getting to know each other, it takes work. Both people need to be there and both people need to put in effort, but it's not supposed to be that hard. It really is true that when you meet your correct matches, 
it is easy. And when they say it's easy, it doesn't mean that you never fight. It means that you communicate, you both show up, you care to continue the relationship. And every day you choose to stay together. A lot of people think the love has to do with a feeling, but a lot of the time love is not enough. There's going to be days where you're going to hate your partner. You're going to be annoyed with your partner. You're going to be less attracted to your partner. You're going to be going through your own things. You're going to think maybe you're bored with your partner. You may be attracted to someone else. But real love, based on the research that I've done, based on the love that I have for people in my life, based on the love that I see between my parents, real love is about choosing to love this person every single day, choosing to show up every single day, choosing to love them every single day. It's not about, well, if today I don't love them, then I guess there is no love. Like I shouldn't be with them. Love is about choosing to be with them. Love is also not always about how this person makes me feel. If you ask yourself why you love someone and the only reason you're loving this person is because they make you feel beautiful. They make you feel good about yourself. They take care of you financially and that makes you feel nice because you can buy nice things. That's a transactional type of love. Good for you. But it's not love, love. The type of love that a lot of people look for. When you love someone, you love who they are as a person. You love how inspiring they are to you. You love how they make you a better person by you just watching them exist. You love their flaws as much as you love the good things about them. You love who you are around them, but it's not just about you love how they make you feel. You love how you see yourself through their eyes. That's not love because if they're having a bad day, then that day they may not be able to make you feel good and you'll feel like you don't love them anymore. So then you won't stay and what a waste, you know? That's why on those bad days when you love someone, you still choose to stay. You still choose to be understanding. You still choose to communicate. You still choose to know that you love this person. Yeah, today you kind of hate them, but you never stop loving them. That's love. And that's what a lot of us seem to miss. And I think there's a lot of you know miscommunications these days when it comes to dating relationships. People are complicated, which makes relationships very complicated. And with social media and so many dating apps and so many different quote unquote love gurus and things like that, it's hard to know what the proper path is for you because you start to think that there's always something better around the corner. And it's not true. You don't always have to leave the minute something feels off, the minute someone makes you not feel that great about yourself, especially if you believe that they're worth staying for. Real quick though, this advice is specifically for people who are currently in relationships, not a situationship, a relationship that you both know you're currently in a relationship. No one's confused about whether or not you're dating. The couples who both people are showing up, both people want to make it work. The relationship has been defined. This is not the advice for the previous stuff that I was already discussing where you think someone is your soulmate and they couldn't care less if you live or die. This specific advice right now is for my people who are just going through a little hiccup in their what was once happy relationship, okay? Because I don't want someone who just listened to my whole episode and they were finally ready to give up their situationship of 75 years. <laughs> and now they get to this point and they go, you know what? I was gonna let him go. But now she's saying, if it really means everything for you, then fight for it. Then sis, you were not listening. <laughs> to the rest of the episode. So this part is not for you. The beginning and middle part of my episode was for you. So please don't take this advice. If he's treating you like shit, it's exactly how he feels about you. This is for the people who are currently in relationships and I'm telling them to maybe not give up on each other at the first sign of boredom or irritation and so on. Try to make it work before you walk away, okay? Cool. Like I said, relationships are really complicated and I don't think there's a right or wrong answer on when someone should leave, how long someone should stay for, how long you should fight for someone, how long it should take you to get over someone. Those are all such nuanced questions. And I think no one knows the answers except you because at the end of the day, you're the one that's going to have to go through the heartbreak and you're the one that's going to have to stay in the shitty relationship and you're the one that's going to have to work to make a relationship work. It's all you. But I do think the people out there who are hopeless romantics, if deep down you know that's what you're looking for, you will find it. You always do. So I implore you to not give up on love if you're hopeless romantic. You'll find your person at the right time. I, I genuinely think that timing is everything. 
And don't be too hard on yourself if you haven't found your right fit yet. It's important to continue working on yourself. And as you keep working on yourself and enjoying what life has to offer, I'm sure with time you will meet the right person. But don't try to force something that's clearly not working just in order to have someone because the holidays are coming. When you're dating, you are meant to keep breaking up till you meet your person. And even when you meet your person, they may end up not being the right person for you. I mean, my mom's a great example. She met the love of her life. She was saving herself for marriage. They got married. She really loved him. And five years into that, she found love letters from another woman. He was cheating on her. And my mom, the strong woman that she is, she left him. And she started anew. She left him at a time where she didn't believe in love anymore. She left him at a time where she just gave up. And it was also during communism in Russia as a Jew, you definitely have very few options. And her ex-husband was saying, who who are you going to go to? You're, You're used goods. You're expired. You're 29 years old a Jew in Russia, who's going to want to marry you? You might as well stay with me and just, I promise I won't do it again, but don't be an idiot. Don't leave. No one's going to want you now. Look at you. And guess what? She still left and my dad wanted her. They married after one month and they're still together. And she's the queen of the house. My mom is literally my dad's best friend. Like this guy cannot breathe without her. He loves her. Does my dad have his flaws? Yes. But they complement each other very well. So wait for a love like that. I definitely look up to the love that my parents have in a sense. And I hope that one day I continue making the right decisions and I meet that person. But until then, I'm not going to settle for treatment I don't agree with or lower my standards just because I don't want to be alone. Because I know how lonely it feels to be with the wrong person. And I know how ugly I feel to be loved by the wrong person. And I rather than not do that to myself because I've already been there in my 20s. I'm not doing that not repeating the same mistake in my 30s. If I was my 20-year-old self and this was the time where I had daddy issues, I would love the back and forth, the does he like me or not, the toxic stuff, the fighting and then making up. Like I would eat it up. But I'm in my 30s. So not only have I worked on myself, learned how to love myself, but I've also worked on my relationship with my dad. Like I have such an amazing relationship with my father now that I literally look for my dad in the men that I consider dating. Because my dad loves me so much. So I expect the men to treat me the same way my father would treat me. My dad would literally go to jail for me. If I accidentally murdered someone and I just didn't feel like going to jail because orange is not really my color, my dad would take the hit and he would go to jail for a lifetime for me. The other day there was glass in my hand, the tiniest little glass, and my dad couldn't even look and me trying to take out the glass, not because he doesn't like blood or he doesn't like needles or whatever I needed to use to take out the the glass. My dad literally just cannot handle the thought of me being even in the most minor, inconvenient little pain. That's how much he loves me. So yes, I definitely expect these men to love me the way my father loves me. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's conversation and We have my subscription podcast. If you want to subscribe, it is my premium podcast with an extra episode a week. It is almostadulting.supercast.com. You can listen to more episodes there. And if you have even five seconds and you wanted to give me a five-star review on the podcast app, I appreciate that tremendously. It helps my podcast and I read all of them. So if you have any time and you want to leave me that five-star review, I would love you forever. Okay. Anyway, besties, I love you. Have a beautiful weekend and I'll see you next week. До свидания. Люблю.